What's going on everyone? Christian Ortiz here with Mod Atlas Media right here in Columbus, Georgia. We're located about an hour and a half south from Atlanta for those who don't know and depending on your driving speed. Check us out at www.modatlasmedia.com. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you name it. We appreciate it. Also, don't forget to hit that little bell down there and subscribe to our channel and give this video a like if you can be so kind. So today, I wanted to talk about photo restorations, more specifically, colorization using Photoshop. Now this day and age, everything has to be done digitally, or at least it would only make sense, right? Especially if you're getting an influx of clients or if your parents are asking you to help out to restore a lot of pictures, or maybe you're just doing it for a hobby. Uh, Photoshop and doing it digitally through scanned images, is probably the best way to go. Whether you are restoring photos for a client, or helping your parents out or your grandparents, or perhaps you're just doing it for a hobby, restorations and colorizations are pretty much better done through Photoshop rather than the old traditional ways. If you still wanna do them your old traditional ways, kudos to you. But today, I wanted to take a look at one of the projects that I recently worked on, roughly around three and a half hours, uh, but I was able to time lapse it down to seven minutes and you know me, I like jumping straight into it. We ain't got no time to be watching no 40 minute videos. Let's deep dive into this colorization that I did and hopefully you'll be able to pull some good tips out that'll help you in doing yours. This is a modern look. <music> So this picture is called Pinball Soldiers, and it was taken May of 1941 during the height of our Prohibition era. Soldiers from Fort Benning are in a country store near Phoenix City, Alabama, which borders our city right over the Chattahoochee River. The photo was taken by Jack Delano, and one of the prints can be found in our Library of Congress. But if you know the cool folks that I know, you'd know that it's also located in Phoenix City. The original picture sells for about 500 bucks and I thought I'd add a little value to it by being the first to colorize it. The game they're playing is Exhibits Contact, created in 1939. This photo is beyond epic. For those who are not familiar with our history down here in the south for Phoenix City, uh, they actually created a movie called The Phoenix City Story. Uh, from the Prohibition era in the 1920s through the early 1950s, organized crime bosses bribed local and state law enforcement to ignore Phoenix City's public intoxication, gambling, and prostitution. A 1954 report by the U.S. Army's Criminal Investigation Division stated that the small town had more per capita incidences of venereal disease and violence than any other city in America. And when General S. Patton was stationed at Fort Benning during World War II, he publicly threatened to cross the river and flatten Phoenix City with his tanks. Hollywood censors prohibited scriptwriters Daniel Maywaring and Crane Wilbur from mentioning prostitution and venereal disease at the time, so instead they emphasized the public menace of gambling and the brutal methods by mob bosses to enforce their interest. Pretty awesome story. If you get an opportunity to check it out, I highly, highly recommend it. Getting back to what I'm actually doing in this picture, as you can see, it's a lot of selecting specific areas so that I can use my multiple tools. Generally, really just using the paint tool, reducing the opacity for the colors that I want. I originally tried to select as many pastel colors as I possibly could, but of course you can control the intensity of those colors with your opacity. Once you've gotten it to a level that you feel comfortable with, you select your area that you want to color and you go over it with just the brush tool. And what I end up doing is taking the burn tool and hovering over it, clicking and dragging it over the areas that I've colored so that I can produce those shadows that you're seeing right there, right over the color and still maintaining some of the base color. I had no idea what this exhibit's contact looked like originally, so I started just choosing... You know, when you're doing these types of edits, you want to use a lot of pastels, and so I just thought of a color palette that I thought would make sense. So as you can see, I use a lot of teals, I use a lot of greens and blues and yellows. And then, when I finally found what this thing truly looked like, it was horrendous. 
I highly recommend you Google it and see just how putrid the colors are for it. A lot of this took so much time simply because I had to select so many general areas. Here you can see that I'm getting very detailed with my line work. Again, I used magnetic lasso tool and poly tool just to draw my lines of where I wanted to highlight and what I wanted to color. Once I got to the top base of the pinball machine, these were the actual colors that belonged to the real thing, especially that side panel there. I don't know if that's supposed to represent like the Japanese flag. I know this was all very uh, war based or, or what have you. It looks almost like a, like a Pepsi symbol. As you can see, I'm selecting so many little random spots. This is one of the reasons why this thing took three and a half hours to do was because it was a lot of selecting, coloring, detailing. If you want to rewind back and take a look at kind of the technique that I was using for their clothing as well, I would select their clothes, I would color it lightly with a pastel color, and simply hover over it, adjusting the brush size uh, for the burn tool to give those shadows, kind of replacing those shadows back and putting them back into the clothing. Uh, you can also see that happen once I color over the pinball machine here. And then going over furniture, the walls. Again, just creating the palette that I thought would make sense. Uh, this is 1941, so the colors are very dark and drab, but I wanted it to make sense. So in a nutshell, I seriously just used the poly lasso tool, sometimes the magnetic lasso tool, the soft paintbrush adjusting the color opacity to ensure I was getting a pastel look, and lastly, hovered each area with the burn tool ranging anywhere from 50% to 100%, depending on how dark I needed the shadows. I hope this video helped, and if nothing else, it was just a cool experience for you. I'll let the music come back and take the rest away. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, and as always, stay safe, and I wish you all peace and light. Thank you.